Welcome back to How to Survive a Horror Movie, Chapter 2, Slasher Survival School, Mask, Gloves, and Motels. Norman, she just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Alrighty. Forget heart disease, forget cancer. In the Terrorverse, slashers are the leading cause of death. More than half of us will perish under their knives, gloves, and axes. Not because they're so clever, but because we, their prey, are usually stupid beyond comparison. So put your clothes on, lock the door to your camp cabin, and let's get you out of this mess alive. The Slaughterhouse Five. Five types of slashers and how to defeat them. Slasher. The one who slashes a tire, a slasher of tires. <clears throat> the most common predator in horror movie universes, sorry, the most common predator in the horror movie universe, slashers, are named for their tendency to use sharp objects to violently kill or mutilate human prey. Like sharks, a slasher's beauty lies in its simplicity. It's the perfect killing machine, an engine of death. Every molecule, every action is devoted to extermination. And just as there are hammerheads, great whites, and nurse sharks, slashers also come in different types, shapes, and sizes. There are three types. The living, or slashes vitalis, serial killers, other psychopaths. And sort of living, or s seminamis, reincarnated mental patients. And the, and the not-so-living, the S. mortalis, dead child murderers. And each of those species can be found divided into five types, all requiring different skills to identify and defeat. One, the strong, silent type. How to identify them? SST often wear masks and coveralls to hide their disfigured or decaying flesh and never, ever speak either for psychological reasons or because their vocal cords have decomposed. Thanks to their freakishly large physiques, they get... Did I remember to hit the record? I did. Let's see. Thanks to their freakishly large physiques, they can walk faster than humans can sprint. SSTs have no pain receptors, so they can take shots. They can take being shot, stabbed, or dismembered in stride. Their weapons of choice are... Butcher, knives, and machetes, and their primary habits are towns and heavily wooded areas. <clears throat> How to defeat them? Smarts. You can outrun them. You can certainly can You can't outrun them, and you certainly can't take them on. But you can capitalize on their Achilles heel. One-dimensional thinking. SSTs are single-minded creatures. They see only what what's directly in front of them and think about only about the victim at hand. This tunnel vision makes them extremely vulnerable to traps, especially those that use decoys, human or otherwise, to lure them in. And once you've got them where you want them, there are only two ways to permanently slice the silence. One, burn them until they're reduced to ash. Mix that ash into wet cement and use that cement to build a children's hospital. Or two, crush them in a hydraulic press. Put the remains through a wood chipper three times and feed the shreds to puppies. Three, or sorry, two, the gamesmen. How to identify them? The gamesmen aren't satisfied with old fashioned murders. They need to make you endure the unthinkable. Kill your best friend or mutilate your own body, for instance. They spend incredible amounts of time planning their schemes, which almost always begin by drugging and kidnapping their victims, waiting for them to wake up, chained to something, and taunting them over an intercom. Next comes the, just to show you how serious I am, display of violence, followed by the, if you want to live, you're going to have to insert complex, terrifying task here. Naturally, the promise of earned freedom is always a lie. Their weapons of choice are overbuilt torture devices and surgical instruments. And their primary habits are urban warehouse districts. How to defeat them? 
Do I have Parkinson's? Oh, what? Okay. Play dumb. Ask for an explanation every time you're given an order, no matter how basic it is. If you're told to cut off your own hand with a pocket knife, ask which attachment do you... Let's see, the wisecracker, the strong silent type, the mama's boy, the gamesman, the half-retarded hillbilly. Suggests, or should I start with the fingers and work my way up? Take it off at the wrist or what? The gamesman gets his kicks by playing God. Stupid questions force him down to your level, the last place he wants to be. If you're able to get him flustered enough, he might take make that one mistake that allows you to escape or put a 45 in your skull either way the joke's on him who's gonna play a stupid game now huh three the half-retarded hillbilly how to identify them in a horror movie if your car breaks down in some bone dry long forgotten town anyone you encounter is either a half-retarded hillbilly or working in close association with one here's how to usually go you're forced to rely on the only tow truck driver in the entire country, county, who turns out to be a roper for the local inbred family of serial killers. Before long, you find yourself trapped in their clown-themed dungeon, where you're tortured, killed, buried, dug up, and eaten. HRS, HR, HRAs kill because of their backward DNA, and because, frankly, they've got nothing better to do. Their weapons of choice are farm tools, and their primary habitats are anywhere non-retarded hillbillies are found. How to defeat them? Out crazy them! HRAs love to intimidate victims with displays of their inbred insanity. Drinking from a jar full of severed testicles, dressing, in in dressing the hairiest family member in a little girl's leotard, etc. But you've got one weapon they don't. A 21st century worldview. Intimidate them right back with tales of modern day horror, such as things you've witnessed in a nightclub bathroom or German porn clips you've seen on the internet. If those don't make them vomit and drive you to the country line, nothing will. The tools arsenal. If you're looking for a weapon in the Terraverse, you can't go wrong raiding the nearest tool shed or garage, but choose wisely. Take the chainsaw. The horror movie defense weapon of choice. Light and deadly. Hatchet. Not as good as a chainsaw, but handy for cracking skulls and severing spinal cords. Sickle. Either long or short-handed. Great for slicing bellies open. Owl. Owl? Owl? I don't know what that is. Penetrates foreheads and eyeballs with ease and fits nicely in your front pocket. Leave it. Shovel. Too heavy on one end. Plus, you're giving the screenwriter a force to dig your own grave opportunity. Rake. What are you gonna do? Scratch him to death? Saw. Don't we have all we don't have all night? Sledgehammer. Unless you're Mr. T wielding something like that, is it that heavy is ne is next to impossible. <clears throat> the wisecracker. How to identify them? They're highly intelligent and highly in inventive. And their timing is impeccable. Unlike other slashers, the wisecracker embraces the world around them, pop culture in particular. While another slasher might simply decapitate you, a wisecracker would decapitate you, toss your head into a garbage pan, and say nothing but neck. They also have strange proclivities to rhyme for no reason. Wisecrackers can be particularly hard to defeat, since the audience is usually rooting for them. Their weapon of choice are razor blades and hum humorously repurposed objects. And their primary habitats are small towns and, of course, nightmares. Oh, it's just a pointy thing? Okay. I've never heard that before. I'm sure if I look it up, I've probably seen one before. How to defeat them. Play to their insecurities. Ask them why they feel the need to make all these jokes. Is it because they never got enough attention growing up? Are they afraid no one will like them unless they're constantly entertaining? Could this be why they feel the need to kill teenagers? The same teenagers that made fun of them all those years ago? Don't they see that by killing their... Killing, they're just feeding into a vicious cycle and in, in, is isolationism? If that doesn't work, just keep repeating the four magic words. I don't get it. 
Five, Mama's Boy. How to identify them? Poor Mama's Boy, so damaged, so unloved. If only Mother had let him play with the other boys. Maybe his taxidermy hobby wouldn't have stopped. Would have stopped at rodents. Maybe he would have been a real doctor. The kind that helps people instead of the kind that, well, doesn't. But no, she just had to keep yelling. Even when she continued to bathe him at age 14, telling him how filthy his body was, telling him what a sinner he was. Mama's boys, who can also be girls, have to kill mother again and again and again and again. But she never dies. Their weapon of choices are butcher's knives and their primary habitat are unrestricted. <clears throat> how to defeat them? Get them laid. Seriously, if they're about to drive a blade through your chest, hold up your hands and ask them, wait a sec and invite them out for a night on the town. Chances are they'll drop the knife and start s sobbing on the spot, since it's the first time anyone's ever invited them anywhere. Take them to a club, take them club hopping, act interested in their rambling stories about squirrel anatomy, and slip a hot guy some cash to flirt with them. Whether a mama's boy is male or female, they want a guy, trust me. The strategy will save yourself, as well as untold numbers of future victims. I'm sorry, did we just call Norman Bates gay? I think we did. Fuck, I forgot about that joke. How to survive summer vacation. Ah, to be young in the summer. To wake up around noon on the glorious July day, the birds singing on your windowsill, a soft breeze rustling the leaves of the oak you've climbed a thousand times. The world is yours. Time is limitless. Only... It isn't. This isn't real life. It's a horror movie. Where long summer days begin with singing birds and end with your throat getting slit in, its wo in the woods. When you're a teen or a young adult on summer vacation, every day is the last day of the rest of your life. That is assuming you make the same stupid mistakes the young horror movie characters always make. Stay away from cabins. Cabins are the bug zappers of the horror movie universe. A place where the more gullible of our species are weeded out in one gruesome instance. Hey, a cabin that looks like a nice place for spend some- Oh my god! My intestines are on the floor! And like the bugs that keep flying towards the pretty light, people who decide to spend their summers in the secluded rundown cabin have learned nothing from history and are therefore doomed to repeat it. The rule is simple. If you enter a cabin, any cabin, Anywhere in the world, you'll be dead in 24 hours. Guaranteed! Two. The fuck was that? Did you fart? Yeah, you just stretched. Doggo. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep away camp. If anyone gets that reference, thank you. What pray tell has more cabins than a sleep away camp? I'm sure. Sure, I'm in a horror movie, but I really don't see the problem with hanging out at... Hanging around a bunch of cabins in the middle of the woods. A bunch of cabins run by teenagers who spend their time smoking dope and humping. Are you crazy? No institution has a higher per capita murder rate. For example, a high schooler of a, thou a high school of a thousand students can expect an average per film loss of seven to eight students or less than one percent. A sleepaway camp of 40 campers and counselors, however, can expect the same per film loss, but that's a murder rate of 20%. Any horror movie character who is willingly attends one of the death camps is making the screenwriter's job so insanely easy they should get shared credit. I'll have to walk the dogs in a minute. Don't take a road trip with your friends. There are only three things that can happen when young people pile into a car. One, someone insists they know a great shortcut. This leads them to an eerily quiet town Stay there. That's not on any map. Suddenly, something goes wrong. Wrong with the car. All horror movie vehicles have sensors that stop the engine when they detect a combination of evil and isolationism. Let's turn the... Don't take a road trip with your friends. There are only three things that can happen when, a young, when young people pile into a car. Someone insists they know a great shortcut. This leads them to an eerie quiet town that's not on any map. Suddenly, something goes wrong with the car. 
All horror movie. Okay, I read that. Strand stranded, they're rescued by someone who promptly butchers them, wraps the choice cuts of meat in a plastic, and stores them in their roadside diner's walk-in freezer. They run, they run someone over. Inevitably, they decide to ditch the body and make it a secret. They spend the rest of the movie getting picked off like scabs. They safely reach their destination, except the destination is a cabin in the middle of nowhere. How to convince, let's see, how to convince the skeptical local police. If teens are heroes and slashers are villains, the cops are comic relief. If only for their steadfast refusal to acknowledge that anything's wrong, no matter how much evidence you throw their way. Why is it so hard for the sheriff to believe someone saw a mass killer in the woods when there has been a mass killer roaming those woods for 25 years? Imagine how refreshing it would be if a group of teenagers could report something to the cops without being dismissed as pranksters or druggies. Sadly, those sworn to protect and serve the horror universe have a hard time getting motivated to do so. That's why, that's why enlisting their help can take some skill. Remain calm. The minute you show even the slightest bit of excitability, you'll be considered historic, hysterical, and nothing you say will be believed. Two, provide compelling physical evidence, a bloody knife, soiled clothing, or best of all, a severed body part. Three, use reverse psychology. Ah, oh, it's probably nothing. I mean, sure, I watched the big fella drag the boy off into the forest, but I'd hate to see you go there on a wild goose chase. Four, don't backpack don't go backpacking overseas until recently europe was a fairly safe place for students to blow off steam between semesters with the exception of england werewolves and countries ending in ania vampires the worst you might encounter are haunted castles that to be honest were more charming than scary but with the more horror films choosing europe europe as their location those Colloquial hunts are fast becoming nightmarish bloodbaths. Today, backpackers have to be on the lookout for human traffickers, dog killing psycho, psychopaths to for a lie. Sorry, this is supposed to be a normal book and they didn't scan it properly. Fun fact. If you want the sheriff to check something out, give him an incentive. Tell him that his wife was seen there partying with members of a biker gang, whatever it takes to get him on site. Now psychopaths, even spell casting preteens. Australia is also becoming increasingly dangerous for foreigners. In the 1980s, meeting a knife-wielding loner in the outback was quirky and romantic. These days, it's fatal. But the most dangerous international destination for Western travelers is Japan. With so many horror flicks coming out of the land of the rising sun, it's best to treat the entire island as one gigantic cemetery. The only place you're safe is in the heart of Tokyo, which so far seems reverse, seems reserved for coming of age romances, street racing movies, and oh god, a giant fire breathing lizard! 5. Bro borrow summer activities from other genres. So we will actually do 5 next time, guys. So let's move on to the next game. Oh, no, we haven't been doing this that long, so I'm going to go... I am going to finish number five. I, I thought we had been going longer for this. Borrow summer activities from other genres. Sure, there are plenty of things you can't do on your horror vacation, but does that mean you're condemned to a summer of Friends reruns? Your break can... Hold on. Why is that giving an error? Sorry. Your break can actually be quite fulfilling, especially if you borrow a few activities from your favorite non-horror films. Go on a life-affirming quest with some child stereotypes. Perhaps you could follow an old treasure map or walk down the train tracks in hopes of seeing your first dead body. Just make sure you pose. Your posse has at least one fat kid, one bad kid, and one sensitive intellectual with one recently divorced parent or two, a recently deceased older brother. Fall for the new neighbor, boy or girl, who dies in the second act. You'll laugh, you'll cry, You'll still be alive for the funeral scene at the end of the movie. Save some of the land from a bunch of developers. Nothing stops urban sprawl in its tracks, like a few kids who still believe in, in the little things called home. What to do if you did some what what to do if you did something last summer? Ask yourself, what I do? 
Last summer could have been ages ago. What, you're supposed to remember every little thing you did between June and August? Chances are it wasn't something it was something it wasn't something innocuous. The filmmakers have to hang the entire premise of the movie on one thing. One action taken by you, the character. Things like that tend to strike out strike out in the memory banks. <laughs> it's okay, I don't think you're a teenager, you should be fine. Things you did last summer that aren't movie worthy. Cheat on your diet, sneak store bought candy into a movie theater, have sex on the football field. Play hop, pool hop, use illegal P2P file sharing networks. Things you did last summer that are movie worthy. Covering up a manslaughter. Two, determine if anyone knows what you did. If you get a letter from someone claiming they know what you did, chances are someone knows. Likewise, if you have the comp accomplices who also did what you did, it's likely they know too. It's recommended that you kill any accomplices as means of reducing the number of people who know what you did. You have the mind of it. Yeah, you're fucked. Three, if someone knows what you did, just fess up. Admit to the crime and do the time. Yes, being in prison movies aren't roses, but it beats the hell out of being a victim of a horror movie. All right, so that is where we're going to leave it. Next, we're going to see how to survive a night of babysitting. So thank you for joining me for this reading. Good night.